first question. The same question will be directed to all of the candidates. Uh, Mr. Young, you will be the first one to uh, to answer this question, and it is from <laughs> Kathy of the Des Moines Register. Right. Um, so uh, the first question is about Obamacare. Um, formerly known as the Affordable Care Act, a couple of you have mentioned it already, um, and I want to first ask you to articulate what you think is wrong with Obamacare, if anything. I, I don't want to assume that you, that you think it's perfect. Uh, and second part of the question is, is there anything in the law that is worth saving? Please. Well, Obamacare is... You know, I believe in limited government, so that's one of the reasons why I oppose Obamacare. It's a federal approach, approach to, to federal health care that I just don't want, and a lot of people don't want it either. You know, I've been to all 99 counties already, and wherever I go, people say, this Obamacare, the Unaffordable Care Act, they call it, it's killing us. I'm a small business, and I can't, and I want to grow, but I want to get penalized. Larger businesses, they're laying people off. They're dropping people from health care, so this is killing the economy. It's a wet blanket on the economy, and it needs to go. And it, it hurts uh, the quality of health care, quite frankly. You know, the president said, he said your premiums wouldn't go up. Well, they're going up everywhere. He said that you could keep your own doctor. Well, doctors are having to turn a lot of patients away. And he said that you could keep your health insurance. Well, a lot of people are getting a lot of notices in the mail these days, and that's not true. And you know, if they can't even build a website, do you really think they can take care of health care for this economy? There's one thing in there that I'm okay with it right now, just off the top of my head. And I don't like insurance companies dropping people with pre-existing conditions. I figure if they're paying in, they should stay on. So that's where I rest on that. Thank you, David. Matt Whitaker. Thank you. First of all, it's a $1 trillion tax on our economy. And right now, we have a lot of people struggling to find good jobs and a lot of folks that are under a lot of pressure economically uh, because of the uncertainty in our economy because of the implementation of Obamacare. We see employers moving employees from 40-hour full-time work to below the 30-hour part-time work that's required by Obamacare. And we see companies that want to grow keeping their workforce at 50 or below so that Obamacare won't apply to them. Obamacare is the wrong policy for what ails America. And there are some ideas uh, that are good that we should Im implement instead. And it goes along with the American tradition I talked about in my opening. And that is things like free market and competition. And some of the ideas would be allow individuals to purchase health insurance with pre-tax dollars. It would be the ability of insurance companies to sell, sell health insurance across state lines. That would increase competition, it would provide variety so that individuals could make the choice as to what type of insurance they want to have instead of being told by the federal government the type of insurance coverage they should have and having politicians legislate the types of insurance coverage that employers need to provide. Uh, we need to expand health savings accounts instead of reducing health savings accounts. That's another place where I would like to see the federal government get out of the way and let people in their younger years when they have less health costs and save money so they can spend it when they might need more health care. And then finally, I would, as a small business owner myself, I'd like to see small businesses allowed to combine their resources and purchase health insurance as a group instead of having to buy it as individual employers. So those are some solutions to really an Obamacare law that needs to be repealed and replaced. Thank you, Matt. Scott Shaver. Thank you very much. You're asking what, would, what I think is wrong with it. Obamacare, correct? <clears throat> and, and also, is there anything in that law that's worth saving? Thank you. Yes, uh, my biggest problem with Obamacare is we are a country that's founded on free market principles. Our health care is one sixth of our economy, 17% of our GDP. I want you to imagine, if you will, 150 years ago, a couple of dudes walking up to Congress, parking their little horses out front walking up the steps and saying, Senators, Representatives, we've got ourselves a great product here. We're having a problem selling our product. Well, we need your help. Our product is so great, we think everybody wants our product. Our product will help everybody. But we're having a problem selling it. So what we need you to do, because some people can't afford it, and some people can't qualify for our product, 
If you know any employers out there that have more than 50 employees, we need you to pass a law that says, why don't you go ahead and make them buy that for their employee? And if you know anybody that doesn't work for somebody like that, just tell them, hey, it's not a law. You have to buy our product. 150 years ago, those people would have been drug out of D.C. behind a horse. <laughs> However, that's just what happened. The implementation of this law is also something I have a problem with. If this thing is so pressing that our federal government has to get involved with it, the fact that it takes four years to implement it, and then on day one, it's a train wreck, we need to start over. I do appreciate the, <clears throat> the, fact, the things that Matt mentioned, selling insurance across state line. Those are, those are things that we can definitely start off once we scrap this plan and start over. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Sam Clovis. I want to talk first about what I heard on the campaign trail about what uh, people would like to see retained in this. Uh, first is in this economy, allowing children that have to return home because they, uh, they can't live on their own. Uh, to allow to stay the insurance up to the age of 26, and certainly the high-risk uh, and pre-existing pre condition issues are there. I want to talk about now what is wrong with this bill. And I'm going to talk about it on a larger scale. We talk about the economics of this bill. I've read the bill, and I challenge anybody else in this building to say that they've read the bill. I read every word of it. And I did an analysis, an economic analysis on it before the bill passed. And my uh, estimate of the cost of this bill was $2.5 trillion over the first 10 years. We now have estimates that put it north of that. So even I was wrong on that aspect of it. That means we're adding $150 billion a year to the debt of this nation because of this bill. How moral is that? What is the morality of having a bill that does that? There are other aspects of this. The comparative effectiveness research that feeds into the uh, Independent Payment Advisory Board. Essentially, a bureaucratic apparatus, 15 people not elected by anyone, who will decide and judge on what health care you will get at some point in your life. The untenable aspects of what's happening with the, uh, the, medical, uh, the electronic medical records. Doctors are spending more time filling out paperwork today than they are servicing patients. What about the notion that we have money still going to pay for abortion in this country out of this bill? What about the notion that we have in this bill, the fact there is no transparency at all? We have con concentration of industry in the fact that we have insurance companies, now only 1,300 insurance companies in this country that provide uh, health insurance, when before we had almost 2,000 companies. This is wrong, and this is immoral. This bill needs to be repealed. Thank you, Sam. Paul Lindy? I think I'm the only one here who has actually sold health insurance. I did it for, off and on, for about 20 years as a licensed Iowa insurance agent, licensed to sell health insurance. So I've had some experience with it. I've gone to a lot of classes on it. And one of the things that I noticed when Obamacare passed, in March of 2010 was that it passed without a single Republican vote. Only Democrat votes counted in favor of that law. I thought there was going to be trouble right away because I thought that the Republicans would immediately try to repeal it and I thought that that was the wrong thing to do. There were good things in that. There were Republican ideas in that bill. I know there weren't any Republican votes for it, but there were good things in this Obamacare bill, this Affordable Care Act. One of the good things Sam mentioned was pre-existing conditions. That wasn't going to stop you from getting insurance. And the ability of adult young people to stay on their parents' insurance. That was a good thing. So why repeal it? Why go back and try to reenact it? So I differ from Americans for Prosperity. They want to repeal and replace. I want to get rid of the obnoxious features of Obamacare, keep the good stuff. And so my amendment is aimed at eliminating only the obnoxious features only the mandates. The rest of it should stay, and it's good legislation. 
Thank you, Paul. Jody.